Listen, you want to talk about tower moments. My tower was a tower and then there was like another tower underneath it, okay? We went through it. We had parents die, relationships in, job loss, new baby. We had a loss of a baby. We had everything happen, okay? Depression, unaliving thoughts. I remember there was a day that I was like sitting downstairs just rocking back and forth to myself like, yo, I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna make it, yo. Hi, <laughs> let's talk reinventing yourself in your 30s. Let's do this while I get ready because I have somewhere to be and I have new wigs to try out. If you clicked on this video, you either know who I am or you are in your 30s and you have been considering pivoting, changing something in your life, whether that be your career or, you know, just your lifestyle, your friend group, whatever. <laughs> Wait, because I feel like we can work with this. This is a new wig that I'm trying. I don't know how I feel about the bang, but the color is definitely giving fall, so let's just glam and see how we feel after we glam. Not me giving you a little Blair Waldorf moment. Okay, let's talk about what's been going on. One thing that I truly believe now is that when you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing or walking in your life's purpose, your path will be redirected, whether you want to or not. And that's essentially what happened in my situation. If you know what it's like to be the exception in your family, to be the cycle breaker in your family, then you know the most common thing that you've heard probably since childhood is how strong you are. And that is something that I incorporated as a part of like my personal ethos. I am just a strong person and so because of that I'm gonna deny myself the opportunity to feel the whole range of my emotions because I, I'm fine but you can only do that for so long and this isn't even me trying to be funny years of me doing this had essentially crippled me and it had left me incapable of actually coping I had no coping skills because my way of coping was just to work harder and to deflect I thought I could success my way out of trauma and that's not how it works and I eventually got to a point where I realized the majority of my relationships, my friendships, my coworkers, like the people that I relied on as mentors, all of those relationships were built on a lie because they were built with a construct of who I thought I should have been. I don't even know if I should care about the bra the bras. I don't even know if I should care about the brows because we have these bangs. I, I, let's leave them alone for now. We'll, we'll revisit. Anyway, I went through surges of really low lows and depressions and feeling very isolated from everybody that I knew and loved. I felt like nobody knew me. I felt like nobody understood me. I felt like I wasn't being heard. And I felt like I was living just a really unauthentic life. And I kept thinking to myself, how long can I fucking do this? Like, am I gonna do this forever? And the crazy thing is the more that I looked, the more that I found people who felt the exact same way that I did. I found people online who were deciding that this was gonna be the year that they changed their lives. I don't know if you guys are on TikTok, but the Delulu is the Salulu girls. May all your Delulu come to Lulu because being Delulu is the Salulu. That's like when that started. Um, everybody was talking about being delusional and like quiet quitting their jobs. And, and at this point I'd already quit my corporate job that was like draining me to death. And I'm like, okay, what now? What a lot of people don't talk about when you decide to change your life and you like pull the trigger on that. At some point you will be floating in a sea of uncertainty. Like you're just like, okay, like what now? I did the thing. I got myself out of that environment. I got myself out of that situation. I feel like a, a huge like sigh of relief, the weight off my shoulders immediately. Once I felt like I was moving in a direction that felt more genuine, I can't even describe it. And then the immediate horror after that was like, oh my God, what did I do? This is all I know, this is all I'm good at. And then here comes the kicker, I realized I was allowing my self-worth to be determined by that job. And I feel like this is a trap that a lot of people get into where you become what you do. And it's even worse when I'm building my entire identity around a job that I actually don't even like. I just so happen to be good at it. So in the midst of me burning down that one pillar of my life, I just decided, you know, I don't know what else to do. So I'm just gonna say F it and like blow up everything else. I stopped recording YouTube videos. I stopped taking brand deals for like a long period of time. I was not accepting brand deals because I, I felt like I didn't want to move from one unhealthy coping mechanism to another. I didn't want to move from overworking myself, working myself to death and allowing, you know, my job to abuse me to doing that through brand deals and doing that through like exploiting myself online. So I didn't want to make, make a pivot to where I felt like I was only exchanging one addiction for another. And it was during this time that I really started like really waking up and realizing painfully so that a lot of my relationships were either one-sided or I had been wearing rose-colored glasses and these were not good people. People that I would consider to be like longtime friends were either saying things to me that they felt like was normal um, but were really hateful and cruel and it took me a moment to be like oh wow like you really think like that 
And you're comfortable enough to say things like that to me because you think I think that way. And I, you know, slowly but surely, it was just months and months of things being revealed to me. But when you see that things are wrong and like this isn't what you want, you can't unsee that. I was having a hard time even holding conversations with people that I I presume like that I thought were my best friends in the world. And there was absolutely a feeling of loneliness there. To their defense, I'm sure that it's really unnerving when there's someone that you think that you know and they start behaving in a completely different way. Again, it's not their fault, but they don't want to know me as this person. This is why people say that like when you're in a state of elevation or when you're changing your life or pivoting or you're doing something different, a lot of people will fall off on the way up because they don't recognize you anymore. And it's uncomfortable for them. It's easier for them to see you as who you were than as who you are now. But the problem with that is that maintaining those friendships keep you tied to that former identity. And I didn't want to continue to have discussions with people about why I was doing what I was doing. And it's very scary because at this age, I feel like a lot of people expect you to be done like you did the things you got you went to college you got married you had the kid you got the job you bought the house you did the thing like sit down and shut up and like you're done but as I continued to achieve these milestones I was like yeah this is fantastic like I'm so happy but also something's missing something's not right and that continued to weigh on my spirit and all that emotional weight came bubbling to the top when I wasn't throwing myself into work every day so I had a mental breakdown to quit my job, to have like four or five more mental breakdowns, just sitting around the house thinking about and processing all of my trauma. And this is the time frame that I feel like people feel like, oh my God, I made a mistake, right? Because now you have time. The way that, the way that capitalism works is keeping you busy and keeping you doing something. It keeps you from having too much time to think about things, to have too much time to question things. You're too busy trying to figure out how to get from this paycheck to the next paycheck. And you don't have time to observe. You don't have time to process. And especially if you're a mom, when are you gonna fit in a full-time job, taking care of your kid, taking care of your home, taking care of your, and then somehow also go to therapy. Like most people just don't have the time to do the work to sit and unpack all of that. And once I started doing that, I started realizing like, oh my God, not only was I building the foundation of my identity on my profession, I was also building my identity off of trying to be the antithesis of what my parents were. So every mistake that they had made, I was subconsciously just so starkly advocating against, which isn't necessarily bad, but the problem is you begin to block yourself off from opportunities because you were saying no to things out of terror and trauma. I got to a point in my healing journey where I realized that I didn't have a personality. I had a collection of trauma responses. My people pleasing was tied to me wanting to make sure that, you know, people weren't angry at me because I had an abusive childhood. You know, I was raised by addicts. I was neglected. Uh, that was a huge component of my personality. I, that's another reason why I had an obsession with making money and being successful because I was always the poor kid. I was the kid who shopped at, at Goodwill. I was the kid who never had new shoes, who had new things unless my aunts or uncles bought them for me. I would always say like, oh yeah, I'm driven. I'm such a go-getter, you know, I'm very type A. No, I'm not. I'm a traumatized adult who is now just continuing to repeat patterns from my childhood. That's not who I am at all. And in revisiting that, let's make a pit stop um, to what I started doing to help heal that part of me that was like gasping for and trying so hard to do something different with my life. I started just making content whenever I felt like it and stopped caring about the views. I had videos that went viral that were just me like looking at my phone, like I'm talking to you right now and just talking shit, just talking shit, just opening my mouth and letting things fly out. I would never do that before because I was too concerned about perception, what people would think, what people would say, um, what if people at work saw my video, what if family members saw, like it, there was so much freedom, not giving a damn what anybody on the other side. This is gonna sound crazy because I'm sitting here, sitting in a room by myself, talking to myself, to a camera through you to say, I was so worried about what people on the other side of the camera would think, that I was not doing things that that align with me. It took a lot for me to realize I'm disappointed in where I am in life because who I really am wouldn't make these decisions. I'm making these decisions out of fear. And once you pop the hood on that discovery, things start happening. I started rediscovering myself. My husband was like, who are you? <laughs> I started writing again. I started intentionally writing again and telling stories online, telling a funny story, you know, something that would keep me feeding that talent and feeding that ability and that skill instead of diminishing it because I thought that it wasn't important. And that was a skill that I had decided was unimportant, something that wasn't to be celebrated because as a child, I had a father who was an entertainer and everybody, I remember everybody talking about how much of a loser he was because he didn't have a regular job. Before that, and really before I realized that my parents, you know, had addiction issues, I, I was my dad's biggest fan. 
I thought he was the most talented musician in the world. And as I grew older and started to internalize some of the things that people were saying around me, I was unable to uncouple his desire to have a non-traditional profession with my perception of him as the addict. My dad the entertainer, my dad the addict became synonymous to the point where things that I had always desired to do, I thought to myself as like, no, that's like, that's not a real job. That's like, I don't want to be a loser like my dad. So I decided to go back to the drawing board and just be who I always thought I was. And you know, back in those days, in the late 1900s, as the kids would say, I didn't have resources to achieve my dreams. My parents were living in an environment where survival was what was important. I didn't, I wasn't living in an environment where I had the resources to try to foster my passions and hopes and dreams as a child. Thankfully, my husband and I are rewriting that story and our children won't have that same experience, but I did. And I, as an adult, am now saying, okay, instead of me continuing to hold all of this shame and you know sadness and really just regret, I, I'm an adult now. I have the resources now. I'm gonna give myself the gift of pursuing these passions because I can. They couldn't give that to me, but I can give that to me. And so began my acting journey. Yes, your girl is an actress, and I've always, always, always wanted to act. I just, like I said, I didn't have the resources. I didn't, I wasn't educated in acting because what I'm gonna do, fight my way out of poverty and then go get a degree in acting? Like, I felt in my mind like, I can't do that. The smart economical choice is to get a degree in something that I can like get out and get a job immediately. And so I suppressed that. I suppressed that for so, so long. And then one day I was sitting around and I said, well, what if I just do like a little research? So I started researching. I started researching how to get, in, how to get into acting. I started researching workshops and classes and mentors and um, you know, what can I do now to start moving in that direction despite the fact that I'm older, despite the fact that I'm a mom, despite the fact that I don't have any formal training, what can I do to pursue this thing that has always been a dream of mine? And it's been like a secret shameful dream. And I know that sounds crazy, but it ha it is truly embarrassing for me because I feel like oh, this is something you do when you're younger. This is something that you pursue when you are, you know, in your teens and twenties. And like, this is when, you know, you have the opportunity to do this. I'm, I'm old and like burnt out now. And I know some of you that are older than me are looking like, girl, you're not old. But that's how I felt. I felt like I'm too I'm too old for that, okay? But I said, you know, what the hell? The worst that can happen is that like it doesn't pan out and it doesn't work for me and I'm not good at it. And then like, okay, I at least I tried it instead of con instead of like living in the what if for the rest of my life. But I ended up coming across this actress and her name was Gabrielle and her page was just so incredibly informative. Not only was it informative, but it was accessible. I feel like just her energy bridged the gap and knowledge and like fear that people have when pursuing acting and pursuing a career in entertainment. And I binged all the content of hers that I could find. And then I saw that she was doing mentorships. And I get on this call, like not really expecting anything, but also kind of being like, mm, am I about to be taken for a ride? And it was the complete opposite of that. If anything, I felt like I was being interviewed. I was like, oh my God, like I'm like giving, you know, an essay on why I want to do this because she, she didn't want to waste her time, right? As much as like, just I didn't want to waste my time. She didn't want to waste her time either with someone who like, genuinely isn't interested in anything except for like fame. So I go through the mentorship, which is so incredibly valuable. Like I can't even describe to you um, how helpful it was just with helping me get through understanding like the business of acting. Like how do I navigate as someone who has no experience and I'm coming in older than, you know, most people. I got my materials together and yeah, like your girl has been auditioning. She has been submitting herself for things. I've been, like building community with other actors online. It's been an incredible experience already. And I'm so, so, so glad that I got out of my own way to do it. In addition to that, like being a full-time creator now, I'm able to like step into what I feel my real message is and like what my real brand is. And that truly is finding myself and helping others hopefully find themselves and realizing that, you know, your dreams don't have an expiration date. And I feel so passionate about that, that I like, that's, that's in my bio everywhere now because I truly, truly feel it. You can pivot at any age. You can make a change whenever you want to. It doesn't matter if you're older, if you're a mom, you know, whatever you're doing now, you don't have to do that for the rest of your life. It's not too late. I really truly believe that. The idea of who you want to be in your head, that person, you, the, the only reason why you have that idea is because it's achievable. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think that if it isn't something that you could do. And I want to encourage you because you don't have to wait for anybody to pour into you. No one sat me down and said, Champagne, what are your hopes and dreams? What do you want to do? I, I had to do that for myself. 
And that's the hardest part, but it's also the most rewarding is to decide that you are gonna pour into yourself. In any event, my story does not end with like, oh, hey, I'm acting now. Um, you know, there's definitely still gonna be a resurgence of my beauty and my hair content here on the channel. So with that being said, um, yeah, this is, I guess, technically my official like come back, I'm on my comeback tour. I've also been posting a lot of hair and makeup content on TikTok and Instagram. It is gonna be making its way here. Um, I'm gonna start doing monthly roundups of my faves. There's also going to be more vlog content, family content, acting content. Those of you who follow me on Instagram know that I am once again pregnant in it. So we are expecting baby number two. Um, so there'll be more content like that. But I wanted to come back with a video to say, this is new, she is new. Um, this is, we're doing something different now. We're, we're pivoting, we're making a shift. But yeah, be sure to follow me on my socials. I'll tag them down below uh, because I'm gonna be documenting this process, documenting my success and my failures in my acting journey, in my full-time influencer journey because I'm st like, I'm in my full-time influencer bag, which is terrifying by the way, because like, I was that person who was like, oh, you know, I probably could X, Y, Z, but like, I'm not full-time because I still have like a regular full-time job. So that's why I'm not pumping out as much content. That's why I'm not X, Y, Z. But now that it's like, no, you're full time like mm -mm. it's really putting my money where my mouth is and legitimately putting my money where my mouth is and that has been such a journey I found so much more success than I expected to find I've been able to grow my TikTok platform to almost 50,000 followers within just last year like last year and this year I think when I quit my job I was at 4,000 followers maybe and to now be at almost 50,000 it's honestly insane it's insane. I've been invited to some amazing influencer trips. I've been building relationships with other content creators online. I've truly been, you know, reflecting back on it, I've been doing everything that I wanted to do, you know, with starting my acting journey. I've been getting auditions. I've been like, oh, wow. I like, I didn't, I like, I wanted this to be a thing, but like, it's happening. I'm actually getting called for auditions. Like, what? I am grateful for this tower moment that, listen, you want to talk about tower moments. Uh, my tower was a tower, and then there was like another tower underneath it, okay? I, we went through it. We had parents die, relationships in, job loss, new baby. We had a loss of a baby. We had everything happen, okay? Depression, unaliving thoughts. I remember there was a day that I was like sitting downstairs just rocking back and forth to myself like, yo, I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna make it, Joe. But being able to now say that like, I'm in a space now where I'm so incredibly grateful and really in awe of what I've been able to accomplish just by being honest with me and working through a lot of my trauma and confronting it and going through it to get through it. Because really the only way through is through. Like the only way to get through it is to go through it. And I challenge myself to do that instead of trying to outwork my trauma, trying to success my way out. And in doing that, in completely allowing myself to, to break down, something more genuine and authentic was rebirthed. And um, you know, the relationships and friendships that I have now, the friendships that I have now are built on a foundation of like mutual respect and love and compassion and understanding. And they're not, um, you know, self-serving in any way. I don't feel like I'm being used constantly. I don't feel like I am, you know, the butt of the joke. And I feel like I'm building a life that I can be proud of, which is the most important thing. And I am excited to share that with you guys. I just drenched my whole face. And setting spray is fine. Okay, we're done, because I've talked your ear off enough. Um, feel free to hit the buttons down below if you haven't already. If you are already subscribed, hey boo, welcome back. We are back in business, we are booked and busy, and I'm gonna show you guys what I've been up to. Um, yeah, I don't know how to end these anymore. Okay, bye. <laughs>